Yeah. All right. Uh, am, am I screen sharing? No, no not yet. Yeah. All right, there we go. Thanks. So hi again, I'm Joy Hobbs from the St. Croix Research Station, um, and I'm going to be talking about LED 210 dating records as a new data set type. Um, and this is work that myself, Adam Heathcote, and Dan Engstrom from the Research Station have been working on with Simon and Jack, um, with others like Don kind of helping us along the way as well. Um, you can go ahead, Simon, to the next one. Um, as we mentioned, in the diatom presentation, um, the research station at the Science Museum of Minnesota has a relatively new constituent database. Um, a lot of our work focuses on the recent past, so last 150 to 200 years. So the majority of our cores are, lated, are dated with um, lead 210 as opposed to radiocarbon. So we were really interested in creating this new data set type in Neotoma. Um, I also want to mention that the St. Croix Research Station has a lead 210 dating facility where we date cores for the larger paleo community. So what we're interested in uploading here goes beyond just our own work, but is a pretty broad representation of lead 210 records across the community. And Dan Engstrom, who's now retired from the St. Croix Research Station, started the lead 210 dating lab. Um, he estimates we've dated over 1,500 cores, but he's been using that number for a number of years. So I think I think we're up past that, but um, 1,500 is a pretty conservative estimate. Um, we're currently dating about 50 to 100 cores per year, and we have people sending us cores from around the world in addition to our own work. And so the reason we, we wanted to do this is that previous lead to 10 dating information in Neotoma um, was kind of limited. You could enter a depth and an associated age with, I think you could just put an error estimate on the age, uh, but there's no place for raw data such as, such as activities. Um, so for example, with radiocarbon, you can upload a published chronology to Neotoma, and you can also upload raw radiocarbon data so that a user could recreate their own chronology. So this is basically the model we wanted. We wanted to set up something very similar for LED 210. So uh, what we did first is we worked with the larger community to set up a list of parameters that we would want to associate with this data type. Um, we wanted to um, reach out and build in this flexibility so that in the future, when other PIs want to upload their LED 210 records, um, the database structure will have enough flexibility in terms of, of the parameters we've put in. So where we're kind of at now um, is Dan Engstrom and Adam Heathcote are in the process of synthesizing um, research station records. As a group, we've kind of put a template together that we'll need for Simon to do these bulk uploads. And um, Simon's kind of working on the database end um, to make sure that Neotoma can accommodate this new data set type. Um, Simon, I'll have you go to the next slide. Okay. Um, and so the record, our records aren't quite in yet, we're getting close, but so I changed this slide to a summary of the records that we're currently gathering. Um, as I mentioned earlier, our kind of goal is to see how many of these 1500 um, led to 10 dating records we can get into the database. Um, Dan has been organizing his archive, pulling together necessary metadata, contacting project PIs, things like that. And then, um, and then Adam's been working to pull all that data into this template that we've created as a group so that Simon can upload. So um, we currently have cores going in kind of three batches or, or working groups right now. Um, the first group has 88 cores, and that's pretty much um, we have we've pulled all the data. It's in the template, and it it's pretty close, or it's ready for Simon to upload. Um, the second group has 130 cores, and Dan's gathered all the data and metadata for those. And Adam's in the process of just kind of putting them into our template format. Um, we have a third group of 100 cores, and 
Dan has actually most of the data gathered for these. He's just getting a few outstanding pieces of metadata from project PIs. So it's about, about 300 cores that we have that are, that are pretty close. And the map is showing the distribution of those color-coded by those, those sort of working groups I just mentioned. The top map is a close-up of the Midwestern region of the United States. Um, we have a lot of stuff clustered here. We kind of started close to home, um, but the bottom map is showing that we do have a larger global distribution and what we're pulling together. And I think there'll even be a kind of better distribution as we continue to dig into the archives and, and pull these records together. Um, Simon, I'll take the next slide. Thanks. Um, so what we're doing next here is our, our working group, myself, Dan, Adam, Simon, and Jack have um, set aside some co-working days in June so we can kind of finalize this upload process and work out the bugs. Um, one thing we're trying to do is, is figure out kind of the most streamlined way to, to deal with this, this bulk uploading. Um, you know, we can put everything into a template, but then, you know, some of these, some of these records represent new sites. Some of them we want to add to an existing site and some we want to add to an existing collection unit. So um, again, we're kind of trying to figure out the best way to sort of streamline that kind of process that we would normally handle record by record in Tilia. Um, so then once we kind of get the final bugs out and figure out this uploading process, we'll continue our data gathering and passing off um, records to Simon for bulk uploading. Um, after that, we want to we want to move to think a little bit more about how these records are going to be used. Um, we do know that there's already a group that's interested in using Neotoma to work out average linear sedimentation rates for lakes in the northeastern United States. Um, they would be like to be able to core lakes and predict when they are confidently far enough down core to be pre-European settlement. So um, they were already kind of looking around in Neotoma and they'd be very, they're very interested in getting more of these types of records in there. Um, I know Dan has also been talking about a synthesis of background levels of lead 210 that he'd like to do sort of based on geography, um, underlying geology, and this would provide um, a central database to start answering some of those kinds of questions. Uh, I think another thing that's important about having these records in Neotoma is that um, this would provide some real transparency in lead 210 chronologies. So confidence in model parameters isn't really reflected in how errors are generally reported um, when lead 210 models are used. So having full records in Neotoma would kind of allow some more insight into the quality of a given model. Um, Simon, I'll have you go to the last slide. And so just thinking about um, our needs and wants, um, I guess one of the first things we need to think about is the upload process for the future. And I'm sure Jack and Simon have already been some putting a lot of thought into this, but it's something we've really kind of yet to sit down and talk through as a working group. I don't believe there's plans to try to accommodate this through Tilia, but perhaps there are. And so we're, we're kind of thinking about how this bulk uploading process can work, but how it can work efficiently um, and not just sort of overload Simon or others when people want to upload a few records. So again, kind of um, as we work through this, kind of figure out how this bulk uploading works going forward. Um, after that, we also want to get the word out to the community once these records are actually in Neotoma. Um, so that others will consider adding lead to 10 models and, and also so that the data sets are used. Um, it would also be nice to get another round of feedback from the community um, on the parameters once we get the, the bulk of records in. That also kind of sounds like opening a can of worms, but I think it's probably a good idea. Um, 
And then lastly, I, I know that Simon has started thinking a little bit about how these data will be extracted with the Neotoma 2 R package, but I think that's one more thing to think about too. Um, once we get them in, how they can um, be pulled out in a, in a usable format for the community. So thanks everyone.